Hi guys, this is video number five in my um, series about my hobbies and interests and this one's going to be about a lot of the uh, older gadgets I've got from at least the, no actually I've got one from the 70s so we'll say from the 70s sort of early to mid 90s and uh, I'll also explain why I've got these anyway. First I'll show you what I've got. I have, as well as a bunch of records hiding under there, a black and white portable TV. Um, this old wooden framed record player, which I may put up for sale in the new year. I haven't quite decided yet, but it may go up for sale. Um, I've got this Alba stereo system from 1990, according to Google. Um, I've also got the Marantz stack system in the lounge from 1980. Well, the research on that one showed it was either 86 or 87, somewhere around there. I just like to say 86 because it's easier just to pick one. Pick one, anyone. <laughs> um, and I've got my old portable radios up there. There's three actually. Um, just plain radios, you know, no, nothing else on them, just the radios. This one, the Panasonic here, doesn't actually have a working FM band. I did get it working, but it stopped working again. Uh, this one, is that the I? No, it's not. This one's got this weird issue that you'll tune a station and it'll work fine. Then the station fades out and fuzzes. And if you pinch the top of the antenna, you get the station back. But as soon as you let go the station fades out again <laughs> so not sure what's going on there I don't know if there's a capacitor on it you know on the way out and you you're acting as that capacitor when you touch the antenna not sure and we've got the ITT one there which is relatively that's probably from the 70s actually um, the only thing that broke on that and I don't like to touch it because it could come off again is the tuning string that runs the tuner and you know, basically the string for the tuning mechanism that had come off. And then right at the back, you can just see it here. That is an actual tape recorder. You can play tapes on it, although it's not very good. It's pretty much, you know, made as a tape recorder for the office. And then I've got this Roberts one here, which I absolutely adore that little thing. It looks like it's got a smiling face, doesn't it? You know, like a smiling alien or something with those two big eyes and a mouth in the middle. I don't know, that's what my mind sees anyway when I look at that. But it works really, really well. I bought that as a, in a... Uh, sorry, I got my tongue in a twist there. I bought that in a job lot of radios. I think that was one of three and that works absolutely fine. The only thing I had to fix on that one was the um, antenna. Needed a new antenna, that was it. That's all I did. Place tapes, fine. I think I did just, at due course, clean the heads on the tape deck, but it does work. And I've got these old school lights up here as well. And I've got lots of other old school stuff. I've got my VHS camera there. The Barclay Card radio alarm clock. A Casio calculator, which... Uh, according to Google's a 1979 model still works still works all these years later and I still use this regularly actually that is my go-to calculator the other one actually died for some reason I don't know what went wrong with it that was a lot newer than that and it died um, I've got a bunch of old phones I've got this old Nokia here that isn't actually working and I don't know if it's because of the battery or what but I couldn't get it to charge or do anything that sagem there works. That sagem there works, but again, the battery is dead. Um, it actually started leaking. I think it's that one on the floor. It's either that one. No, it isn't. The battery's on the back of that. Yeah, it did start to leak. It did work, and it did charge until... You can see where I've started to clean it in there, possibly. Might get see a slight bit of green in there where the battery's started to leak. But yeah, now it doesn't charge. So let's see if I can source a battery for that at some point. 
Or I may actually put these two on eBay as spares or repairs because someone who actually loves phones more than I do might actually buy them. Um, I've just got a few little knickknacks over here. You know, I've got the PDAs, the Dell PDAs here. One, two, three, four, five Nokia phones and the um, little portable battery operated TV. Which still works and it's still got batteries in it. I forgot I'd left them in there. The only thing is it won't work on analog because it doesn't exist anymore, but it does have an AV socket on the side. And it does work. I have used it. <laughs> Just to see if it would work. So, theoretically, it's still usable because you can still connect it to a digital device. Um, but practically, not really. Um, this is the newest Nokia phone I've got and it's still holding charge. See? I like my Nokia phones. I always have been a Nokia fan. And uh, all of these work. I've got the docking stations to charge these. I think I used a lead to charge that one. No, might have been to charge that one. I can't remember. But all these other Nokia phones work. Don't know about that one. There's no battery for it, but I, I bet it does. I'll be willing to bet that if I went on eBay and got a battery for that, it would work. You're going to want me to get the battery now just to prove it, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, place your bets. I'll get one in the new year, so place your bets. Does it work or does it not? Considering it's a Nokia and they were built like bricks back then, literally, you could drop them and throw them around and they just wouldn't break. Uh, the only other things I've got in this room is the old CRT TV. Well, it's not actually that old because it's, you know, silver. So early 2000s probably, when silver was all the rage. I've got the PS1, the PS2, and I've got that VCR-DVD combo. And I've actually got a VCR still in one of the kitchen cupboards. Yes, I still own a VCR. Don't you think? No, I've got another VCR and DVD player under the bed as well. Um, so, we've gone through everything. Why do I like it? Same reason as the computers, really. It's just old technology. I do like the, the, the um, design of some of these radios. And, well, aside from, you know, the usual dirty controls over the time where you just put a bit of contact cleaner or even WD-40. I found WD-40 is actually good at cleaning contacts. Probably not as good as the actual contact cleaner but it works well enough for me so that's what I've been using but yeah. These are really indestructible these old radios. And I like this for a mono radio and I've only got that one speaker. To me it actually sounds pretty good. Um, to me, it's like, well, just like the computer, it's just like owning a little piece of history. Technological history. You know? I can actually enjoy... Well, some of this is actually from when I was young, you know? Uh, probably not that one. It's probably too old, but something like that. Roberts would have been probably 1990s, looking at the design. So, uh... The Alba here is 1990, and everything works absolutely flawlessly on this, or it did the last time I turned it on. <laughs> Famous last words, but yeah. The twin tape decks worked, the radio works, the graphic equaliser works. Um, and the record player plays records. <clears throat> so, I'm happy. I just, I also like to go back and listen to the records and the tapes. And uh, most this actually start the radio started from watching someone on YouTube called Tech Moan, who actually said, or actually did a video on cassette tapes, and um, he said on that video that uh, we all remember tape or audio cassettes sounding bad, and he said the reason for that was that most of us only used the cheap sort of budget radio cassette players, you know. 
the ones that you could probably pick up for like 20 to 50 quid <laughs> and uh, you know I've got some brands here and I have to say even today some of these you probably wouldn't be able to tell it's a tape playing you know not unless you sat there and really listened hard I couldn't hear no background hissing on these or anything but yet yeah, I've used cheaper ones and you do get that a bit of that background hiss sometimes and of course it depends on the tapes as well because you get different quality of tapes but I just think it's nice you know just to sit here and think oh I'll put a tape on and let it play you know go back in time because even when I was little we tapes were still a thing you could still buy tapes right up and actually I'm not sure when they stopped making tapes I know when I was in high school even when I left high school you could still buy them not just as blank tapes which I believe you can still find I actually do have some still wrapped up <laughs> they're gonna stay that way actually same with some VHS tapes I've got, I've got a box of blank ones VHS tapes they're staying wrapped up as well and sealed the awards 1990 Yeah, I don't know, I just like being nostalgic, I guess, you know. And, uh, and modern stuff, you know, we used to we used to using all the MP3 players and listening to music through my PC, you know, something I do every day. Same with watching movies and things. I just think, well, for me, it's just a nice change to use something like this. So, uh, I think that is it. I don't think there's anything else I want to, or can, add to it. So, if you've got any questions or comments or anything, you know, maybe you like this same sort of stuff as well, then leave them down in the um, comments section down below, and uh, I will uh, talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye.